Actually, I'm going to start with this one. It's be easier. Okay. So with this, what I like to use for, for giving the pour texture direction is I'll take another piece of plastic. This one, a clean one, because you can see that it starts to get a little bit worn out if you use it a little bit too much. You'll get like lots of little divots. So I'll take a clean piece of plastic, put that over, and I know that the direction that I want for these pours, they're gonna go this direction. They're gonna travel that way. So what I like to do, this is just a little thing for me and I'll do it, if like say that I have like a nasal labial fold, I'll do it the exact same way. This little guy is great. This was what all that I used when I was uh, doing Guardians, uh, Guardians 2 and re-sculpting the Drax prosthetics was all with this tool. But something that I like to do is I'll block out where I want the pore texture to go. So I'll block out and I know that I want it to all go that direction. Now, if I'm doing like a nasal labial fold or something like that, the nasal labial, the pore texture can go this way and then eventually it goes this way. So I'll do the same thing. I'll block out where I want this direction to go and then the direction that I want it to go after that. I learned that when I was doing uh, hair work. You do the same thing. You'll, direction is very important when you're tying hair. So you wanna make sure that you know exactly where you're going. So learning hair got me better at pore direction. So that way I knew Okay, block out here, block out here, so that way I know I don't get lost, because it's very easy to get lost when you're adding pore texture and it just all starts to get jumbled up. So all I'm gonna do is, this is a very important thing about pore texture, a lot of people will do straight head on. They'll just do dot, 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 dot. That doesn't happen. Pores are, you should pull it more. When you, when you do a pore, it has a thicker spot and then it thins, thick spot and then it thins. So you wanna pull that texture, I'm not just tapping, I'm actually doing this pattern, not that, I'm pulling it. Now this part is the boring part, because you're trying to, it's just dot, 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 dot. And they have like little tools that I found that have like, like a bunch of them all at once. I've never liked the way that those look when it comes to pore texture. The, the thing that I found is just taking a tool and just taking your time and just really going in and pulling that direction where you want it to go. Are you poking the hole, then pulling, or are you just pulling? Um, it's kind of hard to say. Because um, what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm basically doing this motion. Because this would be just tapping. I'm pulling it this direction. So if you see, I guess I can just show you an example. If I'm down here and I'm just, just doing that, this is what the pores look like. So it'd be like that, where they're dark, they just go, they're just indented. So what I'm doing is pulling. So it looks like a little comet, basically. So you can see right here, you see like this little area right here, they're more pulled, they're not, it, you see these like such a harsh shadow that these are casting as opposed to these ones. So you don't want that, you don't, I mean, I guess for a certain skin texture, maybe you do, but for what we're trying to do, like I said, it's, it's more like a little comet. So I'm just tapping and pulling very quickly. Taya spotted the hand in pocket. Ooh! <laughs> I didn't even realize I did it. Thank you, Taya. Nice it's just some, something I subconsciously do now. It's better there. It stops blocking our shot. Yeah, see? Pocket. <laughs> Keep it in your pocket all day Keep it long. in the pocket. Good point. So yeah, I'm just adding, and this is, probably the, the, the most time that I will spend on a sculpture is doing the pore texture. Not really wrinkles or folds. I like to keep a lot, like if I'm doing an old age makeup, I'll keep things really lumpy. Uh, I heard Mike Marino say that he doesn't like to use uh, like rake tools. He likes to leave his sculptures lumpy and uneven because that's, you know, nature. You don't want it to be super perfect. And I completely agree with that mindset, but I will spend a lot of time doing 
poor texture because I just like doing it one by one by one by one by one. That's that's just a personal thing that I like to do. Okay. So I got a pretty good amount of pore texture. It's a little bit of direction, but where the pores are all traveling in this direction. And so you're gonna wanna layer, again, you're layering texture on top of texture, so I'm gonna do it a second time, just very quickly. So, remember when I said that I, I like to leave a smear of clay on the edge? I'm gonna show you why. I'll take the plastic off once I've done. And the beautiful thing about prose transfers and, and, and what I like to do with this method of the encapsulated transfers, you can really take the texture all the way down to the board. Um, I've had problems doing that with foam latex. Uh, silicone seems to work pretty good, but foam latex, it, it, it kind of like messes up the edge. I've found that it, it's kind of a pain to do it with foam latex. But what I'll do is I'll take the plastic off and I'll go over the edge. And I will start to pick at that little, that little smear of clay that I had on the edge and add pore texture to that. What that does is that when you go to apply the prosthetic, there is no transition from like a smooth edge to texture. You've broken that up so it just seamlessly transitions into that. So I will really go in. I, again, I take a lot of disciplines and apply it to different things that I do. I approach doing a sculpture the same way that you would do a makeup. When you do a makeup, you're trying to break up that edge so that way your eyes aren't drawn to it. So. Why not build it into the sculpture? Break up that edge immediately before it even gets to before it even gets on the actor's face. Why don't you use the plastic for the edge pores? I like it to just be as broken up as it possibly can be. I don't like to use the plastic for it because it'll it'll be there, but it, I want it. To, I want the pore texture to literally go down to. The, I want to be able to see the white underneath, because that white underneath is gonna. It represents the actor's skin. So, if their skin is showing through, and it seamlessly goes into their from their skin to the prosthetic, that's what I want. So I want it to literally go down to the board. Again, just a little thing that I like to do. <clears throat> I find that it helps. Okay. Okay. And I'm not cleaning up any of this stuff just yet, and I'm gonna show you why. So after I've done that, I'll take my little black sp stipple sponge again Let's kind of varnish it, just kind of knock everything down just a little bit. And I'll even start to stamp it. I like stamping it because when you start to do the pore texture, sometimes it starts to lift, so you'll get like little peaks. So just kind of making it all stamp down and smooth again. And normally I would do this like, I'd do this entire process like five or six times, but I don't want to bore you with that. 